Tears of Mithril. Scales of Justice Read by Enatos Part 13 Surrounded Elvin and Derville ran to Ducky as he stepped out of the prison. They both hugged him tight as he grinned from ear to ear at the sight of them. In spite of all that was going on, they could not help but feel relief at the reunion. Elvin laughed. You are a lot thinner without your armor on, you know, he smiled. Ducky looked down at himself. Shirt, breeches, boots. Not exactly properly dressed for a fight. He laughed, too. I could do with a bit more on, to be sure. He smiled as well. They turned to look as more prisoners were filing out through the wrecked hall of the jail. Some had stopped and returned, though, as a second room had become visible through the debris. Many items were held in the racks and on shelves. Ducky turned and ducked through to join those already hard at work retrieving their confiscated goods. A strange stillness seemed to fall on the whole area as people began busying themselves. The crowd around the wreckage had stopped trying to run in favor of seeing what was happening. Through the hole in the wall of the jail, they could make out the prone figure of an enormous beast, buried under rubble, seemingly unconscious, although a gentle rising smoke and green light gave a stark reminder that it was probably not dead. Ducky emerged from the wreckage, buckling on the last of his plate. His sword hung once again on his back, and his helmet glinted in the midday sun. He smiled. That is just about enough, came a voice from the crowd. A warden stepped forward, poleaxe raised, his face still dripped with sweat from the exertion of the chase. You are all criminals, he continued, and you! He pointed his weapon at Elvin and Derville. You are under arrest! He made to advance on them, but stopped as a small piece of masonry arced through the air and clanged off his helmet. He stumbled backwards to laughter from the crowd. Oh, stow it, came a mocking reply from the crowd. We've listened to you and done what you said long enough. That's right, came another. And where did it get us? In chains, mining. More cheers and jeers from the crowd erupted. You think you can arrest all of us, do you? Just then, more figures pushed their way through. A score of wardens now stood there, weapons raised. They helped their comrade to stand. If necessary, one of the wardens shouted to the escaped prisoners. And if you do not come peacefully, we have orders to execute on the spot. This ends here. Time seemed to stop as silence fell again. No! came a shout. Not from the prisoners this time, but from the crowd behind the wardens. No, this is too much! The wardens turned to see that the crowd of onlookers was facing them, anger in their eyes. You pick us off one by one. My father, my sister, my children. Different voices joined in as the crowd rallied on them. Stop! Elvin's voice cut through the air. Please! He looked around at the mass of people, prisoners, wardens, and civilians alike. Please stop fighting! This is what they want, not the wardens, not the leaders, but them. He pointed to the body of the dragon. Those creatures have been driving you mad, turning you against each other. That is what they do. This, he turned on the spot, gesturing through the chaos around them. This is what they want. There was a murmuring from the crowd. Is this what your city was like before? Dervil asked. Is this what it was like before the dragons came? Did you live in fear then? Citizens in fear of the law, wardens in fear of the people. This cannot end with a fight, Elvin continued. That will only draw deeper divides. We have to end this before they rip this city, he corrected himself. Before they rip all of Mithram apart. 
The effect was slow, like the pitter-patter of stones that begin an avalanche. The echo of Elvin's words died down, and the square fell silent once more. Until, after what felt like an eternity, there was a sound of metal falling on stone. One of the wardens had dropped his poleaxe. It fell to the ground, and then he removed his helmet. His dark face glistened with sweat as his scruffy black hair moved in the breeze. He looked around at the crowd and at his fellow officers. I will not fight, he said, and stepped over to stand beside Elvin. Another echo sounded as a prisoner dropped the brick in their hand and stepped over too. Me either, he said. One by one, and then in droves, wardens, prisoners, and civilians alike joined together, casting down their weapons. Some wardens, seeing the numbers against them, ran. Likewise, some civilians with them. But before long, the square was joined as one body of men and women coming together. Some smiles and some tears as reunions happened between many divided, fathers and daughters, mothers and sons, partners and friends that had never seen each other since the arrest had begun. In time, though, they all turned again to look at Elvin, Derville, and Ducky. What now? Derville whispered to Elvin. Now? Elvin replied. Now we make one last visit to the Imperial Square. To the palace! Someone shouted from the crowd. The call was echoed by the rest, and the whole mass began to move. Ahead of them, the street seemed clear. Many eyes looked out of open windows as they passed, and some people ran out to join them. Before long, they spilled out into the square. Many embassies round the sides, and there, in the center of the far end of the many stone steps, was the palace. The purple livery of Kanath fluttered in the breeze. They walked in, and then continued further and further, towards the foot of the steps, as the crowd continued to push from behind. Rank upon rank of Alexians filled until the whole square, normally a solemn and quiet place, was alive and buzzing with excitement. What is going on here? A woman dressed in the robes of the Order of Orha came running down the stairs. Behind her were several other officials. Elvin, Derville, and Ducky noted Notley, following along at their heel. This is a place of government, of order. Disperse this very minute. And you three, Notley called out, pointing a finger down towards Elvin and Derville and Ducky. I might have known you would be behind this. You are a disgrace to the kingdom, to the world. This ends today, Elvin called back. The crowd cheered. No, Lieutenant, it does not. A voice boomed down from high above them. They all looked up in amazement and horror as they saw Sergeant Amon riding a dragon and holding a cocked crossbow. He came to land on the steps of the palace and stood high in the stirrups as he trained the end of his quarrel on Elvin. You heard her honor, the sergeant called. Disperse! This is not a battle. This is an insurrection led by a foreign agent. Are you all spies and assassins? Do you live for Angmark or for Knoth? Loyal citizens, go home. A ripple of fear ran through the crowd, and at one far end, one of the assembled lost his nerve and turned to run. A crossbow bolt thudded hard into his chest from the bow of the warden guarding that exit. The dragon beneath reared up and pinned down the injured, prone figure. Disperse, the sergeant called again. The crowd drew in as close as it could as the dragon riders held position at every exit. Sergeant Amon moved his crossbow this way and that as he took them all in. Disperse, he called again. Very well. He jumped down from his dragon and began walking towards Elvin. Just then, a chill ran through the assembled people as the laugh was heard. It was a cold, grim, and heartless laugh. But more than that, it was not coming from the sergeant, or any of the wardens, or even the leaders. They felt the laugh inside their minds, 
cutting straight through loud and clear. Beautiful. It chuckled. Like ants toiling and turning beneath the eyes of their masters. Holding up grains of sand as if they were meteors. The sergeant shook as the reality of the situation gripped him. He raised his crossbow and, trembling, inadvertently triggered it. The beast laughed again, loud and deep, as the quarrel shattered on its scales. Around the square, the other dragons cast down their riders. Many ran to join the crowd. Some, not so lucky, were pinned by the beasts. The officials on the steps backed away, down into the square. You have been fun. The dragon roared again. But you are right. This ends now. Green flame erupted from its mouth, engulfing the entrance of the palace and setting the banners and tapestries ablaze. Feed my kin. Today we dine. In little time at all, the city was burning. Tales of Mithrim are written by Jimmy Clefay. Mithrim is a fantasy world built for the dungeon room role-playing game system. To find out more about the world of Mithrim, or to try out the game, go to www.mithrim.com.